streaming software to kick in and today we're talking edgy social again which is edgy marketing or using online courses and educational content to market your business or services or products or something like that so where are we at right we have here youtube is live hi youtube twitter's live the facebook groups are live and linkedin is not so i'm not sure what's going on with linkedin it looks like it is sending the data now so anyway um i wanted to go through marketing today if you have any questions about marketing of online courses please ask me in the chat as somebody who's trained tens of thousands of people and has around 11,000 students online studying with her I know a little bit of something about marketing I taught marketing for 15 years at the University of Sydney online marketing and social media marketing and um, have quite a lot of clients around the world who study with me and my favorite form of marketing is edu marketing that's not teaching universities how to do marketing it's actually when brands use courses to build communities of interest love it right so and we're on live on linkedin hi linkedin Okay, so what I'm going to do today, I want to start with really quickly, mostly because everything's changing and it's around the pixel remarketing. I don't know if you know, but pixels are the kind of new tech that works with, um, the old tech was called cookies. This is not cookies, but they're similar to cookies. Pixels track you around the website. And so if you land on an online school and you look at a course and you put it in the shopping cart, but you don't get to the thank you page, all of that's being tracked. And then ads can be delivered to you on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, wherever. Um, they don't call them pixels on all the platforms. LinkedIn calls them tags. I think Google calls them tags. Well, they have a tag manager anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to call them tags. And we're going to sort of basically talk through all that kind of stuff um any starting to market animation courses in the world this week all tips appreciated good yes i think you'll find the pixel retargeting stuff interesting so let me just switch across to our screen or maybe not i've had to change the size of everything i'll just um transform that to fit to screen nope one second we'll just pull that down how does that look that looks okay doesn't it right so um i did actually preview all this but i forgot that um, obs doesn't hold my screen size when i change it back to the smaller size so you guys can see things clearly the first thing you need to do is go and create a pixel. And this works for Facebook pixels, Google tags, LinkedIn tags. And you usually do it in your ad manager or your campaign manager. And I'll show that to you in a moment. But I want to get the five steps down really quickly for you so that you can write them down or something and then go to the platform of your choice and just follow it from there. And then I'll show you more in depth. Not too much. We don't have a huge amount of time today. We're recording. Yes, we are. Then you want to check your pixel status and it's called firing. Is the pixel firing? So what you do is you visit your own website and you check to make sure that the pixel says plus one. That it, it worked. And there's some little tools I can show you that tell you if the pixel that you've installed on your new Zenla site or your Teachable site or your WordPress site or your Shopify site or wherever you've installed it, if those pixels are working. Um, oh, that's weird. Okay. Then we've got here. Then you need to create your custom audiences as a separate thing. 
So the custom audience is a pixel audience and I'll show you where that is as well so that you can create that audience. So once the pixel's firing and you've checked it and then you've created an audience and you've said everybody who activates this pixel, fires this pixel, activates it, engages. I, I want you to put them in this bucket. I want you to put them in this custom audience. Then you want to create an ad just for those people. Those people looked at your course, looked at your school. They found it interesting. Maybe they you're going to put into the custom audience that they looked, but they didn't purchase. So you want to send them a reminder. And you've had that happen to you before, right? You've been snooping around the internet, looking at holidays in Hawaii. Does anybody remember holidays in Hawaii? <laughs> I'd never been to Hawaii, but Bali, maybe holidays in Bali. Not anymore. And then after you've done that, um, you created the ad, um, you're going to send out the ad to that audience. So I think that will do. Let me just come back here. I want to bring up now. We don't have that, do we? Okay. I'm going to go into ads manager because I want to talk about the changes. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time today on setting up the Facebook stuff because some of you have the changes, some of you don't. There's around 1,250, 1, no, sorry, 1,250 versions of Facebook running at any given time. Bless their little cotton socks. So when you go into your ads manager, which is facebook.com slash ads manager, if you ever get lost, go wherever you are in your business manager or wherever, go up to the top left-hand corner where it says dot, 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 and you can usually get to what you want from there. And you have, you're going to see this announcement. Now, for me, it's only just come through because I'm actually not in the first wave that gets all the new stuff because I'm teaching. I'm in the second and third wave. I can't afford to be a beta tester for Facebook because <laughs> things just stop working in the middle of a lecture or course or consultancy or something and it hurts. I have had people in classes who've already got the new thing and I'm teaching the older thing but that's sort of the trade-off I had to make. So here's the warning. Now they're placing the blame on Apple. Facebook's going to tell you that Apple's at fault because of the blocking of the pixel. However, it's not just Apple. Although Apple did remove pixel tracking from Safari browsers some time ago, Firefox has done it for ages. All of the browsers have removed the pixels except for Chrome. And then um, what else is there? There's Apple does have more security coming in. So does Chrome version 9. So that's going to be a big change. Watch out for Chrome version 9. I think it's only available for Windows at the moment. I'm on a Mac. I'm on a Macintosh, I know. Go on, give me hate in the comments. Um, now we've got the SDK. Yeah, we know all that. So it's saying to me I have two tasks to complete because I already have the Pixel installed. If you don't have the Pixel installed, you'll just do it the new way anyway. When I go through, it tells me that I've got to complete some tasks for my Laurel Papworth Pixel. Let me see if I can move to the top right. Oh, we still got that problem. Just move that down again. I literally have to restart OBS to get this to work properly and um, not really in a position to do that when I'm already live. Hmm. I wonder if I can transform. No, I can't. So I just let me grab the handles here. And it's not going to let me. There we go. That's as close as I can get. I'm so sorry. Um, what I would suggest. Yeah, that'll do. So due to Apple's iOS 14 changes, only up to only up to eight conversion events sent through from pixels from a single domain can be used for any ad delivery optimization. That won't mean anything to you until we get to the ad delivery optimization section. At the moment, I'm just saying 
don't panic if you see this you just want to go in you want to click review pixels if you've already got the pixel installed and then follow the instructions so i've got a bunch of pixels here and i'm going to um follow all the instructions to make sure that they're working and they're firing correctly. If you're unsure if you've done it correctly, then I'll, I'm going to give you a tool. Now, let me flip to the people who haven't installed the pixel yet. You simply go to facebook.com slash events underscore manager, and then you click create. I'm sorry. No, you don't. You go to, uh, they changed it. Didn't it used to be over here? Oh, I'm sorry. You will need to go into your business manager because when you try to do anything now with pixels, they're insisting that you're now part of Pix uh, ads, the basic ads manager, business manager, business suite. Which one am I trying to say? I really wish Facebook would get their ad to get a uh, business account. So you need to have your business account. You can't do it with your personal ads manager anymore. And I apologize for the muck up mix up, but I just want to say Facebook splits their ads management across three different apps. Facebook runs on an app platform called iOS eight and um, F eight, sorry. Fate. I'm definitely going to finish early today. I've just done way too much already. <laughs> My head's gone like soup. Um, business manager, business suite, creator studio, ads manager, and they all have bits of the pie, if you like. So you're going to have to go to your events manager in your business tools section and upgrade to a business account if you haven't done that already and it's beyond the scope of this and then cre just click on create pixel and you'll be good all you're looking for is the number or the html code so for me my pixel is here you should be able to see that it's not secret why do i know that it's not secret because if you add in to your browser an extension or a plugin or whatever called the Facebook pixel, let me get out of the way. Up here, can you see that in the top right? Up here on the bar, it says face, Facebook pixel helper. And when I click on it, you can see the pixel ID of the person who's a page you're looking at. And you'll be able to tell a lot more later on. Um, with regards to what they're tracking. If you get lost, ask your web developer or ask someone else to simply take the pixel ID and copy it and paste it into your WordPress, your school site, your Shopify, whatever you're using. It's all good. It's the next part with the ads that I think that's important. Um, oh, before I do that, I do want to point out that we can also get Google tags or Google pixels, they call them tags. And my Google tag manager handles my LinkedIn. So I can add a tag into Google that's going to track where people are coming from on LinkedIn. Not necessarily that they were logged into LinkedIn when they came, but that Google is going to tell me about their LinkedIn information and send it back to LinkedIn. What this allows me to do. Hi, Gary, other Gary. <laughs> what this allows me to do is to see um, what industries are visiting my website. Oops, not that I can do it on it on that one as well if I want, but if I go to my website, when people come to my website, the Google tag is picking it up and then delivering via the LinkedIn information back to LinkedIn. 
and LinkedIn is saying to me, on your website, lowellpapworth.com, your insight tag, which is that one I added on Google, is telling us that the majority of people who come to your website from marketing, media and communications, and very few are coming from product management and accounting. What's even better, I'm, we're still at the point where I'm explaining how pixels work and the pixel firing and what sort of information is being covered. If I go into job function and then change that to company, I can see which companies have visited my website um, recently. What's this from the 24th of March to the 22nd of April? So it's saying to me, these guys, and I know that persuasive marketing have been, because um, we are actually chatting this afternoon and we're doing a co-live stream together. So, but here we are, University of Applied Sciences in Zurich has been on my site, probably because of my university series. So if you can make your way through Facebook's very convoluted process in setting up a pixel in the correct tool on Facebook, and of course they're going to bounce you around. So if you go into ads manager and say you want to do pixels, they're going to send you to business manager and say you have to set up business manager, do all that. Then go into analytics.google.com and set up the LinkedIn pixel and they've got instructions on that one as well. Once all that's done, now we want to connect these people into ads. How do we do that? The easiest way is to go to your business tools and into audiences. And again, I hope they haven't changed this too much just yet. And what you'll see in your audiences is the custom audiences and saved audiences. And saved audiences are your manual audiences. This is where you go in and you say, I want to target women to 18 to 23 who shop at Zara, who buy makeup at Sephora, who watch The Bachelor, and you're creating these hyper-targeted um, manual psychographics. If, however, you go into create audience and you choose custom audience instead, I can choose as my source, my website, and my website is going to pick up on my Facebook pixel. You're going to get a little bit stuck because they are limiting everything to eight um, pixel firings now, but maybe eight's enough. So I'm going to say website and I click next. I'm going to say my source is Laurel Papworth Pixel. I'm going to say I want to track not all website visitors. I want to say people who connected to a specific page because I don't want to send my beginner's course ad to people who are looking at the advanced courses or I don't want to send my English language certificate course to people who chosen the study Italian abroad course, something like that, whatever it is you've got going on. I could also target people by time spent on the site. If they spend a lot of time on the site, they're probably very interested. I've only set up three events. We are limited to eight now. I've said a uh, page view is what is, oh, I need to explain events. This is Facebook again. Facebook used the word events for three different things. Um, this is not events like oh, I'm having a birthday party, I'm going to set up an event, or I'm running a live course or webinar, I'm going to set up a Facebook event. This is firing of the pixel is an event, okay? So super annoying. So the pixel got fired when they looked at the page. The pixel got fired when they initiated the checkout, meaning they clicked on the buy now or enroll now. Um, the pixel got fired when they went to the email sign up lead generation thing that I've got. So these are the kind of things that you can sort of segment out. Why do you want to do that? You want to say, I want to target all people that visited my course page who initiated the checkout 
but didn't get to the thank you page. You don't want to pay for an ad to go to people who already got to the checkout thank you. Thank you for your purchase means they purchased. So I'll just go in and edit this one rather than creating yet another pixel audience because I'm a shocker for that. Where's my edit button? There it is. So I said people who visited specific pages and I've said that the URL on the website contains slash enroll hyphen Bahasa or whatever your course enrollment URL looks like. And I think you know on New Zealand you can change your URLs, but you want to target that. I'm going to show you how to add it to New Zealand in a moment. And then I want to exclude the people who got to the thank you URL. So the pixel fired when they got to the study Bahasa with me course page, but it didn't fire because they didn't get to the thank you page. And therefore I'm going to extract out those people. Once I've done that and I've created that audience, now I create my ads as normal. Just move that out of the way. So when I'm in the ads manager, and I want to create a campaign. I'm just going and do a um, use one of my test campaigns. I'm going to edit it. Otherwise, again, I end up with 50 million test campaigns. And I've said, so you create new campaign. And I want to choose a campaign um, for people that is, um, let me see, maybe I want them to view a video. No, I don't want to view a video. I want to view, I want to send them, I do want to send them to traffic. I want to send them back to my website. We're going to click next. And then in my ad set, I want to say that my audience is a custom audience and I want to use the Bahasa one, Pixel Bahasa. So you haven't manually said anything about this audience. You didn't say male, female, over 30, under 30, lives here, lives there. You've just said anybody that the pixel fires for, meaning they visited the course page but didn't get to the thank you page, are now in this bucket called custom audience pixel Bahasa. And then I can adapt it a little bit and say, I only want to target people in Australia, I only want to target blah, blah, blah. Once all that's done, then you go to the third step in creating ads. Again, it's not a how to create ads, it's how to link ads to pixels very quickly. I'm getting through this as quickly as I can. We're already half an hour in. Um, and now I'm going to uh, use a single image and I can say, I want my text to say hello and my headline to be interested in studying, spell it correctly, Bahasa and fill in, oh, it says I want papworth.com and what was it, enroll Bahasa or no, the Bahasa, Bahasa, I don't actually have a Bahasa, Bahasa course, but never mind, <laughs> something like that. It won't be able to find it. Let's just change that to just to my main page. You would never, I never do ads to the main page. People get there and they go, okay, what, what do I do when I get here? So I, I will show them the main page in the display link, but I actually want to send them to the specific landing page for the course. And there's my website events. So you can see here that they're being targeted. So what I've done is I went in and I grabbed the pixels from LinkedIn, from Google, from Facebook. Then I created custom audiences, for instance, on Facebook. I could do it on LinkedIn or Google ads. And then I've said I want to create ads and send them to that audience. 
Now, this section I've left till last, or the last of this part, because it's specifically for New Zenla. If you're using Teachable or WordPress or Shopify, you will need to run those in the, the instructions from there, okay? Um, but just as an idea or as an overview, once you've created all those pixels, there is an area which says copy code or something like that. And what you'll need to do on New Zenla is you go to site under settings, site settings. There is an area which I don't know why. Oh, yeah, sorry, they do. It's got global includes and global includes means I want this piece of code to be on every page. Because remember, we need to we need the pixel or the tag to fire or have an event, whatever you want to call it. Every time someone, um, I think I should be down there. Every time some, no, that's not going to work. Okay, never mind. Every time someone gets to a page, it needs to say, yes, they got here or no, they didn't. Yes, they got to the course landing page. No, they didn't get to the thank you page. So we need this code to be copied and pasted into all pages. Um, it's also possible to add the codes to the course player. I don't, I just do it for the pages. I think it depends on whether you've got a, a free course and you want to see if they played particular things. I don't know. How to hire me as a consultant or something. <laughs> I don't know. And I will point out that this You'll need to copy and paste this piece of code to um, this pixel code, this retargeting code to your Shopify site, your WordPress site, everywhere that you can. It can be your Google code and or your Facebook code and or your Twitter code and or your LinkedIn code. All of them, for as far as I care, all of them have tag. If you can't find it under pixel, you know, LinkedIn pixel ads, then do LinkedIn target ads, tag ads, tag manager, tag manager, tag manager. This is not the sort of thing that you can do in an hour. Okay. Yes, you can. Once you've done it 500 million times, you just go in, you copy the code for the tag. Then you go back to your website, you paste it all your websites, then you check that it's working. Then you go back into the ad managers of the LinkedIn and the Twitters and the whatever of the world and you create your ads. That can be done pretty quickly. It will take you a little bit of time the first time that you do it. But I want you just to think through that slide of create your pixel and copy it should say in copy and then paste it in global includes. I'm pretty sure on WordPress you have to use the Facebook plugin and then paste the num the secret not so secret number in there. And then let me just go through this clearer with you. Get me out of the way. Am I out of the way? Yes I am. Um, then check the pixel status to make sure that it's working, then create the custom audience in the ads manager, in audiences, in, in that, it's not a hamburger menu now, it's a dot, dot, dot menu. And lastly, create the ad and then make sure that in the ad set, which is always the second step of the ads, choose the custom audience, the one that you just created, which is called a website audience. They change the name from custom audience to website audience and back again all the time. What did I say? Super annoying. I'm hoping that you understood the core of that in 33, less, less than 33 minutes. <laughs> it is um, a bit of a dark art. It's the sort of thing that agencies do, but small businesses rarely dig into. I do think that the event triggering is important because, for instance, if somebody comes to your website and they're about to sign up for your email newsletter, but 
their dog runs out into the road and so they don't get to the thank you for signing up to the newsletter. Maybe that's a good event to track, pixel firing. If people get to your course website and they um, put a course in their shopping basket but they don't get to the thank you for your enrollment page, I think that's a good one for tracking. I don't tend to track every little thing that they click on. It's, it's, it's not important enough for me. And now that one of the things that Apple's doing is limiting those events, Facebook firing events, pixel firing events to eight, uh, you want to be a bit discretionary with, with what you're tracking, I guess. I wanted to do this today because it's changing dramatically and I thought it was a good idea to capture it now. I will do another video in the future. Once everything's settled down, we know how it's going to work and that the process is really, really clear. It's definitely going to move out of browsers. The pixel thing was going away. And we're looking at something called server side tracking, I think. It's called Flock on Google. Let me just put this up again. Um, and it did look to me as though WordPress was going to track all of this, uh, block all of this stuff, I should say. Um, WordPress. It would be in the news, I think. F-L-O-C, not double C. Let me put this up on the screen for you. Ah, still got that one wrong. Okay. WordPress versus Flock. So my understanding is that F-L-O-C, Federated Learning of Cohorts, whatever that means, it's Google's alternative to third-party cookies that don't require collecting users' browsing history. So this is their, this is Google's attempt to get around Apple's pixel issues. But then if WordPress blocks it, what the one that's coming in, we're all in trouble. So this is going on at the moment, April the 21st. I'm going to put two hats on here. On one hand, if you've got online courses and you know that you're, you've got a warm audience, they came and read a blog post on something and now you want to drive an ad for your course to them because you know if they liked the word, the WordPress, the blog post, then they're going to like the ad. Then this, then I think that Pixel remarketing, cookie remarketing, server-side remarketing is awesome. And it's useful for both parties. They've already said that they're interested in how to study Bahasa or how to do cooking or whatever it is. And so it's quite a good chance they'd be interested in the ad. On the other side, there's quite a lot of issues around privacy and how annoying it is and whether you can block these things. Now on Facebook, you can, you can go to the top right hand corner, you can go into your profile and you can say, I want you to turn off Facebook pixels. I think they call it ad tracking or something. There's a couple of things with that. One is you're demoted in the newsfeed. And secondly, you're not allowed to do ads yourself. It's as though Facebook says you can't, you can't do ads if you won't accept our ads. And maybe fair enough. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, WordPress slams Google flock over security concerns. I'm not sure I can bring this up clearly. Oh, yeah, I can. Goody. If anybody's got any ideas about why, oh, I think I know what's going on. Hmm. So we've got this one. We've got filters. Yeah, I go very white on, very pale skin on this particular screen. So thanks, Gary. Um, if you have a WordPress site 
and there is a war between Google and WordPress. What do you think is going to happen? How's your SEO going to be? What sort of issues might you, how might Google penalize WordPress users? Hmm. We'll see. If the government gets involved, which they almost certainly will, if you think of the GDPR in Europe, if that gets extended into pixel remarketing, and absolutely the Privacy Commission of Australia should be on top of this, then I would be interested to see how uh, server-side tracking is going to happen. Server-side just means instead of the pixel on the browser tracking people, it has to happen on the back end. It has to happen within New Zenla. It has to happen within WordPress. It can't happen at a browser level. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see. What other questions have you guys got for me? Um, what did I say I was going to cover? Oh, autumn, uh, uh, algorithms. Yeah, let's do the algorithms one. Because we've got 10 minutes left. I just want to bring up some of my university exercises. Um, no, we'll do this one actually. Let me go to this. So... All the algorithms work this way. I'm going to use Facebook as the example because it's the simplest one for me. Are we on? This? Yeah, we are. Okay. So I'm wiggling things around. <laughs> and you probably have already figured this out, but out of the thousands of updates that are available to you on LinkedIn, on Facebook, or on Twitter, you get 20 to 60. So when you log into Twitter, it says top tweets for you. And then it just gives you the top tweets in the stream. You don't see everybody's tweet. When you log into Facebook, unless you're using a specialized news feed, then you're only going to see 20 to 60 of top, what they call top news. And LinkedIn does the same thing. You don't see everything from everyone. So I want to cover off with you the data sets. And this is directly from the data research team. So I read the patents and I read all the documentation that they can give me. And I make sure that I understand um, competing interests with regards to data sets. And it is competing interests. So the first one is every social platform creates a for your channel, for your Facebook page or your Instagram account or your LinkedIn uh, company page or personal account or whatever, <clears throat> a core audience. And it's psychographic based, not demographics. So it's like the people on this page, like extreme sports, 28 to 35 year old men, mostly, um, they travel a lot, they're cashed up, they're this, they're that. They drive and then they split the data set, split, split up um, the different kinds of cars. There's luxury cars, family cars, budget cars, things like that. And all that's being pulled in from big data companies. And once they've determined the audience for your page, anybody that doesn't meet that audience is kicked out. It's one of the reasons why BuzzFeed has 80 pages. So if you have courses for lots of different audiences, you really need to think about that. I mean, if you're running programming courses for a specific type of programmers, then you're fine. But if you were to run Italian language courses for high school students and then for senior citizens that travel a lot, the so-called smart townies and golden days and um, grey nomad group, then you might have um, Italian languages, uh, Italian classes for um, I don't know, um, for, for work, for business, you're going to really struggle putting all of them on one Facebook page to market your school. So think about that. The algorithm will choose one audience and dump the rest. Then there's a, some, some semantic engines. Uh, the keyword cluster engine is lexicon. And this means use your words on the platform. Don't just say, isn't it great? Or I'm so thrilled. Use your keywords. 
I'm so thrilled that we've got 5,000 students studying Italian language with us, Italian language students. Use those keywords so that the algorithm keeps hooking in. Oh, there was someone, you know, there's somebody out there that was looking for Italian classes and this page is continually talking about Italian classes. I'll link them together. The next thing is the social graph, which is the the developer term is for a friend of a friend. On LinkedIn, it's called the economic graph. On Twitter, it's called, I forget now, but it's the relationship between people. So if you're a small business owner and you're looking for a course on how to do accounts on QuickBooks, <laughs> there's a really good chance that all your friends a lot of your friends are small business owners as well. And so the algorithm tries to send things like your friend Sally liked this or your friend Jim commented on this. You've seen that a lot on all the platforms. And that's the friend score of the relationship between you. And it's over 28 days. It's an MAU, monthly active user. So the friends you've spoken to in the last 28 days have a high score and more likely to see the stuff the people you haven't spoken to for ages won't. That means when you are getting content from a Facebook page, um, the likelihood of that being forwarded on depends on that friend's score. Again, small business owners know small business owners. Engineers know engineers. Retirees know retirees. Um, mums with babies know mums with babies. And social media managers no social media managers gamification whole different section and I will do some stuff on gamification because it's so critical in the education space I mean education really is gamification there's leaderboards there's prizes there's um, scores there's um, leveling up there's uh I don't know, what what isn't gamification in education in, in courses? And so it's pretty critical to be able to have badges and leaderboards and uh, there's quite it's quite a dark art. So we might do a whole different section on gamification. Let me know if you're interested. Gamification for education. The lookalike audience, once you've got your core audience really clear and then the algorithms, Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter, use the friend score to deliver out, ripple out. It can also find strangers that have nothing to do with the original people that connected and engaged with you. And it's, they're called the lookalike audience. So every time somebody engages with you, the algorithm looks and profiles them and then goes off to find similar people. If people don't engage with you, you don't get the benefit of that. There's deep text, deep face on Facebook and Instagram, deep mind on Google. These are semantic artificial intelligence engines that are sentient. <laughs> it's all very much the matrix. And it's about predictive behavioral analysis, which is all very much a sophisticated way of saying, use your words, uh, recognize that there's facial recognition and object recognition. So for instance, on this video, the words I'm putting up on the screen are being read by the algorithm. The image in the background is being read by the algorithm, which is why sometimes I use the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And it's, it's a lexicon is just a keyword engine. Deep text is much more than that. It's trying to truly understand what the words mean on the page and what is the sentiment around it. So if you say something like, well, that's just great, isn't it? It should be able to pick up on sarcasm. Should be. And yes, deep face is object recognition. So if I hold up, um, I don't know, my uh, vitamins, it will identify vitamins and then I'll probably get vitamin ads for the next 28 days. Monthly active user. Story type. So important in education. 
are your students visual or are they text focused? So if you're teaching a course on how to write a book, how to publish a book, how to self-publish a book, your the story type of your audience, individuals have a story type, is text. This person likes text. And the algorithm knows that because that person clicks on links to the Washington Post and likes to read long stories, involved information. There are other story types that are visual story types. They like videos. And then there's another set that like photos. And so you need to make sure you deliver your content in the story type format that that person likes. Um, it's interesting to me that I've seen video promotions for courses that are all text. And that would be incredibly disappointing to the visual type who expect a video. That actually reminds me, I think I've got an all text video, uh, all text course, but then I don't use videos to promote that course. And it is for people who are text focused. Think journalists, think editors, think writers and publishers, think academic researchers, think engineer, story types, engineer, IT. Um, who else is there? Lawyers, accountants, tech story types. The last act of 50, 24 data set is did... Did the user engage with your content in their last 50 interactions over the last 24 hours? So when people ask me, how often should I post? Really to leverage this, you need to be posting twice a day because if they engage with the last post, they'll engage with the next post as long as it's within 24 hours. Absolutely don't do social media dumping. And you Zenly, you do this. Don't put up five videos and then nothing for two weeks. Stagger those videos out so that you're in the last actor group. It's also called the wedding data set. Um, what uh, the head of the data research, no, the news feed said, was that if people interact with a wedding on the morning of the wedding, they should see the rest of the wedding photos. If somebody interacts with your new baby photo, they you. Should, they should see the next 50,000 photos that are going up of that baby. Um, if they're interacting with an event or a conference or webinar, then they should see the rest of those interactions. It's like a viral spiked event. So I'm, I, I don't try to go for the last act of 50 all the time, but leading up to a viral spiked event like a webinar and then at the end to capture everybody who did engage or was thinking of engaging, make sure you're posting twice a day. We do a lot of, I do, I've worked on a lot of film and TV launches. So this is the sort of thing we're thinking of. And then rituals and memes. If there's a hot topic in your audience, then definitely talk about it. What's a hot topic? Um, Let's say that you've got courses for small business on how to do their accounts and then there's a big change to JobKeeper or there's a big change to Bass or the, if you're watching from overseas, if there's a big change to the company tax type of situation, then make sure you're on that wave of everybody talking about it because it's more likely that your courses, which are on how to do accounts for a small business, will get through to the right audiences. Anyway, enough death by PowerPoint. I'm not a big fan of that, but I, I did want to give you the pixel one and the, um, and the algorithm optimization slides because I think that they're a succinct way to think through some of those things. If you are unsure about that last point on memes, uh, just think hashtags. When a hashtag is trending, it goes to more people that are interested in that hashtag. You don't have to choose the Kim Kardashian hashtags, just use the hashtags that the small businesses are using or teachers are using or whatever it is that you're, whoever you're trying to contact. 
and connect. Don't hijack them. Trendjack, newsjack or brandjack hashtags. Make sure it's absolutely relevant. Any other questions? I feel like I went through, that was even denser than last time. There was such a lot of information there. Um, keep an eye on that Facebook pixel retargeting. I am a bit concerned about it, especially for those of you that have are, are spending a lot of money at the moment on those ads and seeing a decline in revenue. And I don't want you to waste your money because I think it's going to change dramatically in the next few weeks. All right. No other questions, guys? Gary Friedman, are you still around? I don't know if any of that helped you with your animation course. Don't forget to create your audiences for any ads that you do for your animation course, but then segment them out. So remember that some of the courses will be for parents with kids that are interested in animation. Make sure that you're targeting another group that are teachers at schools and colleges that are interested in animation. You might want to target uh, agency land. I don't know who studies animation, uh, but maybe agency land who might be interested in doing some kind of animation with their ads or with their material, that kind of thing. Sorry, I'm here. Yeah, I know you're there. That's fine. Um, just want to make sure LinkedIn did go through. Cool. Okay. LinkedIn, don't know if you're there. I actually don't think I get to see the comments from LinkedIn until after the live lectures finished. So I apologize for that. I can see that there are people on Facebook and YouTube watching. So hi, thank you. And yeah, I think that's about it. What else do we have here? Um, this is just, I got told off the other day because people said they didn't know what I do, not a promotion really. This is what I do. <laughs> there you go. How exciting for you. And because I forgot to put it up earlier, I'm putting it up now. So Edgy Social, the series about creating online courses and online schools and making sure that your social media marketing is on tap to build your brand, whether it's a personal brand or corporate brand, and how courses can work with that. Now, what I'm doing next week is I'm going to walk you through corporates that use edu marketing. We're going to look at, you know, Cisco's CCNA online course. We're going to look at the Washington, I think it's the Washington Post, <laughs> I have to check, who've got online courses for people. And I, if you're an online course creator, I want you to think through the possibility of working with big brands that have big databases for them to co-brand with you an online course offering. So as an example, if you teach Bahasa courses, then you might, how to speak Bahasa, then you might want to find an industry organization or a large corporation that is looking to train their staff or to offer as a public service some online courses. Um, it's something that's definitely worked for me over the years. And you know, if you're used to speaking at their national conferences and you're used to speaking at their boardroom level, or maybe you go in and you train their staff or you've done some other form of corporate training, then the online course is another revenue stream that you could add to your bow. That's all I'm going to say for now. We'll talk about it next week, next Thursday at 1 p.m. Mondays. At 10.45 a.m. is uh, Social Media News, where I test my setup and play with a few different things. And, um, oh, good. You already took on the idea and emailed them. That's good. Thanks, Gary. Gary Friedman. Um, 159. 
On the dot. Yes, didn't go over the hour. Okay, my loves, I will see you either on Monday at the Social Media News or next Thursday when we're covering and continuing the Edu Social series. Don't forget there are others in the series. One of them is I set up an online course in one hour on New Zenla from scratch, including the pricing and adding. I don't think I actually add the payment gateways, but I go to the section where you do that and uh, landing pages and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's quite a bit in the series so far. So I'm going to keep working on that. All right. Thanks, guys. I will see you on the morrow. Bye.